Hello, students. Let's read the problem. And it says, sketch the graph of each linear inequality. And my problem is 3x minus 2y less than or equals to 12. So what I need to do is I need to sketch the graph, which basically means graph it, right? For my linear inequality. So let's look at the linear inequality. Notice how my inequality has the x and the y on the same side. So before I do anything, I need to solve for y. Yes, that's exactly what you would do if this was any question, right? You would need to leave the y by itself, okay? Let's write down my problem. So I have 3x minus 2y less than or equals to 12. So I am going to continue with the steps to solve for y. I need to take away or subtract 3x's on both sides. Okay. Once I subtract the 3x's on both sides, 3x minus 3x is 0, which means cancels out. And I have negative 2y less than or equals. And of course, we're going to switch the terms, right? I'm going to move the 3x, which is negative. I'm going to move it to the front. So this will be negative 3x plus 12. Okay. What's the next thing that I need to do is, in order for me to solve for y, I need to get rid of the negative 2, which is multiplying the y. Therefore, I need to divide by negative 2. Notice how when I divide, I divide each one of the terms on the right and click 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 let's see if you remember something here what happens when i divide or i multiply by a negative number what do i need to do to my symbol i need to switch my symbol is that right and this happens only when you multiply or divide by a negative number so let's continue Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is a positive 1, which gives me the y by itself. I don't need to write the 1, right? Negative 3 divided by negative 2 is a positive, but I am going to leave it as a fraction because remember, rise over 1 requires for me to have a numerator and a denominator. And 12 divided by negative 2 is negative 6. If I want to represent that, I can just say minus 6, okay? Now, before I graph it, I'm going to compare my inequality to the equations just so that I can uh, make the, the connection between M, which is a slope, and B, which is a y-intercept. So, this is just for comparison purposes, okay? So, I'm going to write down y equals mx plus B. And now... I am going to circle this one, and that negative 6 is my y-intercept, and that positive 3 over 2 is my slope, very good, which is the rise over the run, okay? There's one more thing that I need to identify, and that is this symbol that is here. And I'm going to write it down over here. And I'm talking about that symbol, which is greater than or equals to. If it's greater, when something's greater than something else, isn't that kind of like higher, right? And higher means above. I'm just writing keywords. We're going to come back to the graph and we'll uh, make sense of all of that. Now, since I do see the inequality symbol with the equal sign, underneath that's the one that determines whether it's going to be a solid or a dashed line since it has that little line on the bottom it means it's going to be a solid line okay now we can sketch my problem okay so i'm going to go back to my graph and i'm going to say where do i start i'm going to start at negative 6 for y, okay? I'm going to start at negative 6 on the y-axis. 
I'm writing more sentences just to help you uh, have better notes, right? So negative six, I'm gonna go and find negative six, which is right here. That's where I'm gonna start, okay? What do I do next? Well, once I start in negative six, I'm gonna follow the slope. And the slope is three over two. Since my slope is positive, then my line is gonna look something like this. Maybe not exactly with that steepness, right? But it's gonna be pointing to the right. Very good, okay? So this means I'm gonna go three up and two to the right, okay? So let's go back to the point negative six and I'm gonna count three up. That's one, two, and three and two to the right. And I'm gonna make my points a little bit darker, a little bit bigger, right? Next, I'm gonna still go three up, one, two, and three, and I'm gonna go two to the right, one and two, right there. And I'm gonna continue doing that. So I'm gonna go three, that's one, two, and three, one and two, one, two, three, one, two. So all the time, I'm going three up and I'm going two to the right. This is my rise over the run. I can do one more if you want to. So I can go three, that's one, two, and three, and two to the right. Now, let's suppose I want to find one more point that is lower than my y-intercept. I can do that. But for that, I need to go the opposite direction, which means that instead of going up, now I'm gonna go what? I'm gonna write that opposite. I'm gonna go down. And instead of going to the right, I'm gonna go to the left. Very good, okay? So let's continue. I'm gonna go three down. That's one, two, and three. And, and look what I'm doing, I'm going from the negative six, which is my y-intercept. Then I'm gonna go two to the left. If you were to get a ruler or something that is straight, you will see that all the points are gonna be in the same pattern, in the same line, in the same direction, right? Okay, so now the next question is, do I do a dashed line or do I do a solid line? And right here, it says that I'm gonna do a what? A solid line. So I'm gonna connect those points. And this is my arrow. The reason why I like putting an arrow over here is so that you can compare to what we said earlier. This arrow is pointing towards the right. If it goes to the right, it means the slope is positive. And that's exactly what we said right here. The slope is positive, it should go point in that direction, okay? What's the last thing that I need to do? Well, I need to decide whether it's gonna be above or below, and right here says that it's supposed to go above. So remember, going above means, I'm gonna look at the negative six, which is right here, and I'm gonna look at all the numbers that are above. All the numbers that I highlighted are above negative six. So guess what? That's what's gonna be highlighted, all of that. So to me, that's a huge clue when it comes to deciding what am I gonna highlight, okay? So let's finish this up. Sorry if it goes a little bit off, guys. We're almost done. Okay. So that's how my graph of the linear inequality should look like.